British author M.R. James is among my all-time favourite writers of ghost stories, along with Algernon Blackwood and Shirley Jackson, and recently I rediscovered some remarks on ghost stories written by M.R. James. In this essay, James breaks down what he believes to be the required components in crafting terrifying ghost tales. In this video, using James's essay as the foundation for my analysis, I will explain the elements of the modern ghost story. To start this video, a simple question must be asked. What are the elements of a ghost story? Well, James's essay denotes the following elements as the core elements needed. The pretense of truth, reticence, a pleasing terror, no gratuitous bloodshed or sex, and no explanation of the machinery. So let's begin with the pretense of truth. The pretense of truth refers to our understanding of reality not being as uniform as we perceive it to be. It is believed by the majority of people that death is the finality of all life, and there is in fact no such thing as an afterlife. Simply put, in regards to the ghost story, the pretense would be that ghosts do not exist, spirits do not linger in the realm of the living, nor do they reside beyond, for there is nothing beyond, only decay. But when the protagonist of the ghost story is faced with that which cannot be explained, the pretense of truth is shattered and the protagonist's reality is shaken. Utilising this in supernatural fiction develops a larger sense of unease within the viewer or reader. After all, the strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. In the essay, James states, Reticence may be an elderly doctrine to preach, yet from the artistic point of view, I am sure it is a sound one. Reticence conduces to effect, blatancy ruins it, and there is much blatancy in a lot of recent stories. He summarises that blatancy, in this case the showing of the spectacle too soon, reduces the overall effect of the story. For example, let's take The Woman in Black. In this film, adequate reticence is not employed. The antagonist is shown much too early and much too frequently as a comprehensible being, which diminishes the overall fear factor of the spectacle's presence. Meanwhile, the YouTube film In the Dark uses reticence throughout, never truly revealing the horror and allowing the fear of the spectacle to fester until the final moments. We see something, but for the most part the image is left to be conjured in our own minds rather than displayed on screen. This is an incredibly important element of the ghost story both in film and prose, I think. In the case of the paranormal, the adage, sure don't tell, is actually more detrimental to the experience than simply implying. I would draw the parallel between the jump scare of the modern horror film and reticence here. Jump scares are used used mostly as a substitute to building suspense, or an engineered payoff of a suspenseful moment, which, ironically, often annihilates any suspense in the scene. Sure, there are likely people who have a phobia of being startled, but that's not the entire demographic here, so it doesn't hold weight. After all, those who watch horror want to be scared out of their wits end, and ghost stories should be handled with much more care than simply writing a ghost that only jumps out at people. A pleasing terror refers to the wonderment and psychological terror of experiencing a ghostly apparition. Where many genres of horror focus on the extreme suffering of human beings, ghost stories use a much more subtle form of terror. Falling in line with both the pretense of truth and reticence, I'd argue that the perfect recipe for a pleasing terror lies in its execution and subject matter. With suspense being such a huge part of what makes ghost stories scary, using too many jump scares or, if in the literary format, telling is when something is supposed to be scary and instead of building an atmosphere, the showing of the spectacle too much and too often cheapens the overall story. Similarly, there must be real world consequences when unexplainable things happen. If a character witnesses a headless ghost wandering the halls of a dilapidated castle, I think that would be pretty life altering. But I've read books and watched horror films wherein a protagonist sees what is very obviously a ghost and just kind of says meh and never references it again. In doing so, rather than being something we should be afraid of, the antagonist is reduced to nothing more than a haunted house attraction that never does much of anything except just startle the protagonist. So, to simplify, atmosphere and suspense plus terror must equal real world consequence. These consequences can manifest in many different ways, such as possession, breaking a protagonist's mind, or changing a protagonist's emotional state. Again, without consequences, the antagonist is akin to a scare actor and fear is made redundant due to the lack of threat it possesses. No gratuitous bloodshed or sex doesn't really need explaining as it's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll skip ahead. 
I think a major downfall of most ghost stories is the strange need to explain everything about the spirit. Much of the suspense and mystery of a ghost comes from the unknown. In explaining its inner workings, the terror it's supposed to inflict upon us is lessened. We aren't meant to understand how the afterlife works. We aren't meant to understand that which isn't supposed to actually exist. And when a ghost story explains these things, the afterlife and those who reside beyond become predictable and boring. That's not to say that the reason for a haunting can't be explained somewhat. Back during the Roman Empire, ghost stories were written with a common theme of respecting the dead, and spirits would enact their vengeance on those who acted disrespectfully to the deceased. This is a perfectly fine way to explain the reason for the haunting, but further expanding upon this, in ways that remove much of the mystery and unknowing, more often than not, becomes a detriment to the story. In many ghost stories, there exist themes of loss, guilt and melancholy, where tales from the time of the Roman Empire use spirits as vengeful entities who haunt those who disrespect the dead, modern ghosts can also be used to portray themes that almost everyone can relate to. The thing with ghost stories is that the ghost itself is often used as a metaphor for the protagonist's emotional state. As an example, in the film The Babadook, the antagonist, while not technically a ghost, is still considered supernatural, acts as the protagonist's grief personified. It's a metaphor for the lifelong depression experienced by those who whose loved ones have passed. One can never truly be free of that grief, but instead, one must learn to live with and control it. Whereas in A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, the ghosts each serve a purpose in showing Scrooge his lost innocence, past mistakes, and his future, and all those who have been affected by his choices. A cautionary tale of morality, if you will. Characteristic of most horror subgenres, ghost stories have been and will continue to be used to tackle poignant social issues. Looking back to the Victorian era, an example of a story which uses women's rights as its core theme is Ralph the Bailiff by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. This story was used to comment on the helpless plight of women in Victorian culture and extends sympathies to women with no marital property rights and no familial control. Unknowingly married to a murderer being blackmailed by his manservant, the story's protagonist, Jenny, is haunted by hallucinations of the dead and unsettling dreams that whisper of her husband's guilt, and a downward spiral of tumultuous circumstances leave her both homeless and penniless. James summed up the essential elements of a ghost story as malevolence and terror, the glare of evil faces, the stony grin of unearthly malice, pursuing forms in darkness, and long drawn distant screams are all in place, and so is a modicum of blood shed with deliberation and carefully husbanded. To any of you interested in reading ghost stories but are unsure where to start, I would recommend the works of M.R. James, Algernon Blackwood, Shirley Jackson, Sheridan Le Fanu, and Charles Dickens. These are, in my opinion, some of the all time greats, and their works are timeless pieces of horror mastery. Thank you all very much for watching, head on over to my Twitter at DanJBlackwood to let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see from me, and I'll see you in the next video.